Alrighty, tubes, how is everybody? We're in the garage again here. Nice warm garage. Got the uh, pot belly going once again. Uh, I have a little uh, little project over here. It's a, uh, already kind of <laughs> more than halfway into it. But it's a uh, Emerson uh, electric motor. How many horsepower is this thing? Like one thirtieth of a horsepower. And it's cool because it's a uh, split phase. For those of you who know what that is, uh, I'll explain it to you sometime in the video. But um, I've never seen such a small motor that split phase. And uh, as you can notice, I got some co contrast going here. Uh, got an old towel put down here. Uh, a little tip from my buddy uh, 805 Road King. You know he's a he has some good stuff up in that brain of his. Not all bad stuff. Some good stuff up there. Now, <laughs> now nah, he's a great guy. But no, he uh, he suggested I, I get some contrast going on. But um, yeah, and uh, if you can read that sticker, it says you can barely see this motor. And I figured it out. This motor is equipped with a uh, thermal switch, a thermal cutout switch. So if this thing gets too hot. Uh, it'll it'll just kill the motor until it cools cools back off again. But that's that's what that sticker used to say. It's kind of a shame that not not any more of it's there. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm more than halfway into it. Got a uh, the armature with the uh, centrifugal uh, weights and uh, uh, collar that activ act activates the uh, switch, hence split phase. And then you got you know your bell housing and your clamps to hold the motor down but uh... now we're just gonna clean it up, blow it out, put it back together, easy peasy so this is gonna be more of a uh... sort of an informational video uh... just you know, showing how this works, I mean, I'm not an expert in it, but you know just gonna share my knowledge with you guys um... and w whenever I get an electric motor, I always, especially an old one I, I love old electric motors you, you, you want to take them apart, uh, to, you know, when you first get them, if, if they haven't been taken apart recently, you want to not run it, you want to take it apart, clean the bearings, clean the, uh, if it's a split phase, clean the centrifugal switch here, um, or the, the, the centrifugal mechanism here, and then you want to make sure the switch is, is open when there's no pressure on it and all that good stuff, you want to make sure it, it won't fry when you plug it in. Uh, especially if, if the, the airflow holes are all plugged. But anyway, split phase. So, you got, I'm not perfect at explaining, especially, especially this, but you got two sets of windings. I hope you can see this. Yeah, sort of. I, I don't have the right light that, that direction. But you got, you got two sets of windings in here. You got your run winding closest to the laminated steel here where the armature is and then you got your your start windings on the outside they're short shorter winding and it gives it a extra extra inertia to get it going because otherwise you just sit there and hum and then you can spin the motor both ways without it's uh, without these coils uh, activated energized so how it works is uh, this is actually this way in the motor so this this has nothing to do with electricity. This this is just pure physics uh, inertia and crap. So when when the motor is sitting like this, not spinning, these weights. I really hope you can see this. I'm I'm just kind of rushing through it. Uh, f uh, um, are are like this. So are are not. They're not out because there's no there's no centrifugal force when it's just sitting there. So this collar is pushing the contact for the run windings closed so you have a closed circuit to your run uh, to or sorry your start windings you have a closed circuit to your start windings your run windings are always on no matter what they're always on so when you plug it in it'll be able to fire up because these run windings or oh my god these start windings are are engaged or uh, energized but if you had them energized the whole time, it would fry the motor in a matter of 30 seconds. So, 
you got this switch here so these when it comes up to speed these weights these weights out here fly out and it pulls this collar in and allows the contacts back here to open and it shuts your uh, starting windings off so it's just running with the run windings on the inside so you have a nice cool running motor uh, this is pretty much any like any old governor in any old motor but uh... let me see if I can get a flashlight show you guys inside here more alright I got the uh, trusty light here so hold on so you see those two brass bars with the little felt uh, round things at the end they're the uh, I'm sorry I'm shaking this motor is very heavy but uh, right now those are, are spring-loaded touching the contact so the the start windings are closed so as soon as that collar the the weights push that collar toward the back of the motor it separates the points and cuts out your start windings so it's just running on field windings and there's your back bearing and everything but uh so let me uh let me start cleaning all right so i actually kind of yes last night i kind of uh, just blew this one out uh but i'm going to just take a clean paper towel a couple times and clean inside the bearing there cuz you don't want you really don't want any sort of dirt in there but uh the bearings look amazing you can't really see that it's too small of a uh, opening a bore but the shaft looks great I hope it's focusing. I not even looking, but uh, and and when you take these apart, make sure you do not lose your thrust washers. There, there's multiple of them, like shims, so you don't want to lose them. Uh, but anyway, uh, got the air hose here, so if you have headphones on, beware. It's gonna be a bit loud. So put the put the safety glasses on. Right tubes, safety glasses. All right, so make sure your thrust washers aren't going to go anywhere. Ooh, whistly. <laughs> the compressor might go on and scare the crap out of me. Do not go anywhere near your skin with compressed air. <laughs> that would be very bad. But, uh, yeah, just give this a quick spurt. Don't, don't want to knock the uh, insulation off the windings there. Oh, and when, when it's running, it's induction from the run windings to the, the armature. If I said something wrong in all this explanation, please tell me. <laughs> I would like to know what I uh, what I did not say right. Oh, and these uh, a lot of these old motors have a place to oil the bearings at. Make sure that's very clean. And uh, if it doesn't have a cap, you want to put some kind of cap over it when you're not using the motor, so you don't so you don't get crap down in your in your bearings. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's uh, look at this a little closer, or I will anyway. Alrighty, what I like to do is just take a paper towel and go over everything. If it's real dirty, you want to use, you know, like brake cleaner or something. Just make sure you lube everything up before you put it back together. But what I, what I like to do, uh, like I said, paper towel, take the thrust washers off, make sure you know what side they go on. Just clean the shaft, and, you know, clean, just do a wipe down, blow holes out if you need to. Uh, but I like to take some uh, silicone lubricant from, you know, any old Ace Hardware or whatever. And uh, really should shake this a lot more. But, you know, just give a little, just two quick little sprays on the thrust washers there. And then I like to give the uh, centrifugal me uh, mechanism here some, some loving. Not too much, it'll attract dust, and this silicone stuff doesn't attract dust too uh too good, so that's that's a that's a good thing. But uh 
Oh yeah, that'll work real good. That's all you want for that. But and when when you put this back in the motor, make sure you you don't bang up the front part of the bearing, or else you'll never get it in. And don't just go nice and slow. You don't want to hit the windings and nick nick the windings. Your motor would be totaled. But anyway, let's clean this up more. Oh, and to uh, to clean the paint, what I like to do is uh, again paper towel. They're your best friends, and because they're just a s slightly, I guess you can say abrasive. Or not not just you know they're, they're not the smoothest thing like cotton, but uh, you take WD-40, spray it either on heavy stuff or just spray it on the paper towel and give it a rub. If it's really heavy, then you're gonna have to scrub with some soap in a sink or something, but you obviously can't get this wet, so uh, that's probably where a carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner comes in play, but anyway, for, for finish cleaning, just to get the light stuff off, even after you're getting the heavy stuff off, just use WD-40, and it'll shine that black paint right up, and it'll uh, protect it a little bit with the WD-40. Anyway, let's uh, get back to cleaning. And uh, just another quick random tip before I forget, uh... When you're taking apart an electric motor, this is just going to be filled with random tips. Uh, the the side of the, the bell housing that uh, has the switch on it, you'll be able to tell that probably just it's the opposite of the output shaft. Uh, don't I would I would shy away from taking this one off unless you're doing complete like restoration or, or uh, in depth cleaning. Which, the way I'm cleaning is perfectly fine, but because you, you don't want to take this off, uh, if you do, be careful, because there's going to be wires attached to the windings, and they're always old old and brittle. And Another tip, uh, if you ever want to soak these bell housings and anything to clean them up, just remember that there's going to be cotton or, or something stuffed in the, uh, the oil hole to, to wick up the oil. Um, just remember that whatever you soak it in, soak it in that wick is going to hold it uh, until you, you let it evaporate or something. Um, yeah, just random random tips. There'll probably be some more. I uh, took a break, went to Ace Hardware. <laughs> Got some gloves because I ran out last time. Uh, so, going to put some gloves on and uh, continue. Better for your hands. And uh, another uh, quick random tip to uh, quick take any crap you might have uh, gotten in the bearing by uh, w when you're when you're cleaning the motor to get any dirt out. Just take a piece of a cotton T-shirt or whatever, something that won't scratch up the bearing. I would not use paper towel because the uh, little fibers come apart. You can actually see it in the black paint. But uh, just uh, run it through there. You like stick a pencil, maybe run it through there. Uh, if it's a blind bearing, meaning that you can't get to the other side, just wad it up in there, turn it, pull it out, turn to a, uh, a clean spot, and repeat. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. Alright, well, uh, we got it all back together, and sorry about this handle being in the way. Uh, you guys will live. But, um, yeah, let's, uh, we, got, we got everything cleaned up, oiled up. Let's uh, see what happens. We got it wired up here. Heck yeah! Alright, I don't know if you can hear that, but um, uh, a couple things. I want to thank Josh, the guy I uh, met at Jack 10, for uh, selling me this motor and another motor. Uh, and if you guys are ever wondering what that click noise is when you uh, shut the an electric motor off or turn it on, it's that switch. I always used to uh, uh, wonder that, and now I know what it is from. Uh, couple years of working on these things but um yeah and uh, before you put it together you gotta oil the shaft and the bearing and then slide the armature in and put the bell housing on and tighten these equally but uh, anyway let's um, plug it real quick plug back in I don't know if you can hear that click it's like the quietest uh, switch in an electric motor I've ever heard because it's so small but uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, the usual. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, you'll see Hit and Misfits in another video, guys.